Do you have your key talking points down for your buyer and seller consultations to negotiate your commission in a post NAR settlement world? Let's talk about it today on the Wandering But Not Lost podcast. And now your host, Jen O'Brien and Matt Emerson. Welcome everyone to the WBNL Wandering But Not Lost podcast, where together we align, connect, and prosper. This is episode 310. You can find all those show notes over at WBNLpodcast.com. Jen O'Brien, the unfolding uh, fallout from the NAR settlement, you know, is going across the, the, the states. And it's interesting how, you know, people are are dealing with in in different ways you know we had our uh, panel discussion a few weeks back and you know it, and that was a few weeks back and a lot has already not changed but you know a lot of things have continued to morph since then um but uh, everyone's handling it a little bit differently so i'm looking forward to getting your take on how things are going there in uh, las vegas and your recommendations for definitely improving, improving the value right that you bring to your buyer yeah and i feel like uh, just in a few short weeks in the transactions we've had to deal with, I'm, I'm going to talk a little bit about what has been happening for myself, my team here in Las Vegas. But we really want to start today with breaking it down into the buyer consultation and then I'll cover the seller consultation. And just to set this up, we're not going through everything that needs to be in your particular consultations. We're just talking about some key points, the talking points that you might want to include if you're not already doing it. And then I'll talk about some things that have happened where I really think it's all about negotiating uh, and it just become the commissions have become a term that's negotiated and how every particular transaction is going to be unique and different due to the circumstances of everything, the, the players, what's going on, what's the motivations and what are the needs and wants of both the buyer and the seller. I've already started to see that play out, but I want to go through today to ensure that you have great things that you're integrating and you've thought through and just focused on what you have to cover regarding practice changes after the settlement uh, has taken place, right? So we've all had a little time. Now, every state has uniqueness, so make sure you're following the procedures for your state, meaning uh, everyone has new forms. Okay. Uh, everyone has, everyone's having to do some of the same practice changes. It's just, how are they doing it? Right. For example, we don't really have a showing form that we're using in my company. Uh, we're just going right to a buyer brokerage agreement. So you follow whatever are the practices for your company and your state, but I'm just going to hit the key points today. And honestly, I want to start with the idea that in my mind, a consultation, an initial consultation to qualify and build rapport and start building that trust and show your value proposition has always been a critical factor to a successful real estate transaction. I just think that a lot of people, especially on the buyer side, just kind of glossed over it or covered a few things, but really didn't do a formal presentation. Much like I think most of us no, you have to do a presentation with a seller because you might be competing against other agents. We have to think that that's what we're doing now. We're listing the buyer. And guess what? The buyer might be talking to two or three buyer's agents who are going to tell them variations of this, hopefully help them understand that everybody has to get into a buyer brokerage agreement now if they're going through you know, uh, the uh, Association of Realtors and, and an MLS that requires it. So all I want to say up front is, really focus on a great consultation, all right, mm -hmm. and make sure you're incorporating some of these key things. So let's talk about the buyer consultation first. So I'm not talking about the initial phone call that you might make to set up the consultation. I'm talking about you're face to face with them in a conference room somewhere, maybe even a coffee shop, or you're online in a Zoom type presentation where you're going to go over a formal presentation. Obviously, you're going to cover all the other things that you would do as I mentioned, uh, you know, what are they looking for in a home and go through the process of buying a home. But today, I just want to talk about integrating the practice changes and how do you talk about it. So start with that. <clears throat> we start right off the bat with that. What do you know about what's happened with the real estate? Are you aware of the, the recent settlement that uh, the National Association of Realtors had? I like to see what people know. Sometimes people bring it up. So, some people have said, yeah, I understand that. I mean, it's classic. We keep on hearing that real estate um, for sellers, I'll talk about that when we get to sellers, that I don't have to pay the, a real estate commission to the buyer now. You know, like it's it, like it's a law. Th that word law comes out a lot. Really? I understand that there's some changes to that. Most people didn't really pay attention to it. 
don't really understand. So you've got to keep it simple. And this is the easiest thing. So uh, there, you might so address whatever they've heard, even if they've said all these things that are wrong and misinformation, disinformation, just go, here, let me break it down to you. There's two major practice changes as a result of this lawsuit. Number one, there can no longer be an offer of compensation to me as a buyer's agent in the multiple listing service. And if people have bought a home before, you can go over that with them. They'll That's where they're like, you didn't really think about it before because it was usually incorporated into your offer because we had some kind of an offer of compensation. Well, that is gone now. And number two, we must all, if we're working through one of the local multiple listing services and through a realtor association, we must all as an agent have to enter into a buyer brokerage contract with you before we can start showing homes. And the things that have to be discuss with you, which is what we're going to do right now, is what is my compensation and how can it be paid to me? And that's what I'm going to cover. All right. So you start with that, address all the you know concerns that they might have heard and just break it down to those two main points. The rest of these talking points are going to help you under- explain it all to them. Okay. So the introduction to the settlement changes and then go and you have to decide what your commission is going to be. What is your commission? And the key to this buyer brokerage agreement is you can't go up in the commission. So you can put a percentage in there that you're agreeing to. You can always negotiate it down if you wanted to, but you can't go from, you know, a, let's say that you just for the sake of, um, I'll use me as an example. Um, we'll put, we put 3% in our buyer brokerage agreement, but we also explain to them that, it may get negotiated and what our, you know, and what is our bottom line and our bottom line might change and we'll address, address, we'll address changing this if we have to in the, in the negotiating back and forth with the seller. Cause y- y- we're going to, you know, don't, don't bog down in that right now. Uh, but you just do need to explain what you, you have to know at this first point, what is going to be your compensation? I'm just trying to right. point out, you can't go down to an A and then go up to a C, okay? You, you've got to go down or, or hold firm to what it is that you're, you're wanting to charge. And that's, everybody gets a choice in that. What is, what is your time worth? What kind of services are you going to provide? Could be reflective. I personally feel as we move along, we're going to see a continued downward pressure on, com- I'm already seeing it, commissions will ultimately will probably come up a little bit lower overall for most people. There could be new models that pop up where people are just willing to do a menu of services. I'm already starting to see it happen. We're only a month or so you know, into what, August 17th was I think the date that it yep, became right. effective across the, the and, and for many, many associations, they started earlier. But the reality is we're, you got to be adaptable. Things are going to change and you just have to decide what kind of model you're working with and what and maybe that will impact the kind of company that you're working with and how much is your time worth and those type of things. So you have to have that ahead of time. Number two, now I think you have to explain to them, how can I get paid? Well, first and foremost, we can, if you want me to include my compensation that we just went over in the purchase agreement. Most every state I've seen so far has it either in the purchase agreement or they have a form to use to augment and to, you know, to make a part of the purchase agreement. So that could be the first option, right? Another option can be they pay for it for you. Another option can be a combination of the two. The seller pays part, the buyer makes up the difference. And again, this is where you basically want to go through and have the rest of the topics I'm going to cover here because each situ- there's not a standard way you're going to do this. It just depends on the situation and the buyer and the amount of funds that they have and their their negotiation tactics and what's important to them. Is it price? Is it payment? You know, what is it? So it's just as simple as that where it's going to be a term. It's going to be something that we're going to negotiate in the offer or you're going to pay me. Those are really the options. Okay. Now, it's all about negotiation. And that's what I think is changed big time here. So yep. you're going to go through in this portion of your presentation, you really need to talk about how the commission is basically becoming another term that gets negotiated. So I just want to talk about a couple anecdotal stories of what's happened for us and for our team. So it's very interesting because I think we're in the beginning stages of some sellers basically saying, well, I don't want to pay that much commission. All right. So we've had a couple scenarios where I'll give I'll give you an example of one scenario where we went in 
And we just, we put in two and a half. We want, our commission was going to be two and a half. We agreed upon that because um, we're also selling the person's home. And that was our agreed upon commission with this, with this client. And we went in and the, we had no problems. This one particular situation, all the other terms were negotiated, but, and they, and they just worked with price. Uh, they weren't asking for any closing costs. And honestly, the seller just came back with a different price and we, everything was good. We hope most of our transactions go that way. Now we'll come to another scenario where we're representing the seller. So we get an offer. It's a full price offer and it is asking for a 3% a co-op commission to the buyer's agent and 6% in closing costs. Now, multiple counters back and forth. We as the listing agents did not counter his commission. We came back with an amount that we felt was fair because we just didn't see where 6% was needed after we got all the details of the buy down and the things that they were doing. We came back with what was legitimately enough to cover all of that. Well, the agent because we wanted to basically say, if your client wants more, then you have an opportunity because we didn't counter your commission, which I think is an interesting tactic because, and guess what? This is where the guy kind of blew it. The, the, we get on the call with the buyer's agent and, and we suggest, look, this is what we're willing to do. The, um, it, you, he, oh, he, uh, so sorry, what he did is he came back and he said, we need $3,000 more. And so we get in a call with him and say, well, Let's look at this. We could maybe increase the price by a thousand dollars. If you took a half a percent less commission, that would make up the difference. And this is what the guy said to us. No, I'll just collect that commission from my buyer. And we're like, whoa, time out. Yeah. Ah. You basically are trying to tell us that your client needs all this money to be able to qualify. And now you're telling us that he might have enough money to be able to pay that. So we'll leave it in your court. You figure out what you want to do, but we're not doing more than that. Well, ultimately he did come back and he got, he got the, uh, he reduced his, he took a lower commission. Okay. And, but, but, but the, that's an import, important thing. Now I've talked to many agents who are, are saying, for example, and I'm just using numbers. There are no standard commissions. As we all know, I'm just using numbers in real cases as I'm talking about this. So we had, uh, you know, a, situation where i mean there i'll just use it anecdotally because i talked about this on the team if we go and we write a, a request i think there's a I'm sorry i'm trying to just get my head straight around this <laughs> the, the reality is here's a, a tactic okay this is a tactic that we do all the time when we're writing uh offers and there is a philosophy everybody has different philosophies on price so let's just talk about sales price so do we come in how much lower do we come in if we're not asking for any closing costs, for example, so we're just going to write a clean offer and let's say it's priced well, but it's maybe on the high end. The question becomes, how low do you go? And so a negotiating tactic is to come low that the seller is going to counter and in between is really where your buyer wants to be. Does that make sense? So mm -hmm. the house is listed for 700,000, you know, and we come in $30,000 below, they come up and want it to be 10,000 below and we come in at 20 or somewhere in between. Does that make sense? That's what I think is going to start happening with commissions. I've already seen it. We come in and we ask for 3%, they counter back at 2% and you end up getting two and a half percent. You know, it's funny because it, really in real estate for the, for the, I don't know how many years now, negotiation has really not been as big a part of the game. And this is totally the game now, because if you're, what you're, what, what I'm hearing, Jan, is, is that, you don't want to, obviously, you're not going to want to show your hand, right? So from a seller side, you're never going to put anything more than 3% in your in the commission side, because that's your, or whatever you've negotiated for your part of the sale, the sale right. you know, thing. But you are letting your seller know that, I mean, when you, let me ask you this question. When you're building the, that net sheet for the seller, are you building in extra money to pay for the buyer's agent's commission? Great point. And we have one of our brokers is really about not doing that. And okay. I at wow. first was like, let me tell you, I have opinions on both of these. And again, this becomes a strategy. Yeah. So the reality is, so first thing, great question on net sheets. And when you're representing a seller, I rec I personally never do the net sheet at the list price because more right. than likely there's going to be, unless you've priced it really low 
So, you know, it, it, again, this is market dependent. I, I should really sure. state that. I should have stated that from the get-go. I'll come back to market dependent uh, in a moment. But in our current market where there is opportunities for buyers to negotiate, most likely the list price is going to be lower. So I, if we listed something for 430, I'm going to do a net sheet of 420 just to get them prepared. Now, that's how I do it without putting the commission in just deal with the sales price because what I'm going to say to the seller is we're going to look at every offer individually and we're going to do a net sheet accordingly so we can figure out all the terms and conditions, including any concessions and or commission that the buyer's asking for. So that's kind of my feeling. There might be people out there that think I'm going to go ahead and put somewhere between two and 3% in there just to get them ready for it you have to decide what you think is the best way to go with that. It's a great question, Matt. And I don't- Well, it's interesting because that clearly that guy was kind of doing that on the other side with the buyer, right? Except for he showed his hand and said, hey, my buyer's gonna, exactly. of course, he ended up not paying for it, but that's interesting. And, but, you know, so if it's really going to be a, a term, it becomes one of the many things that we're negotiating. Right. And in any given transaction, it's not just the price, it's maybe concessions for the buyer, uh, cut, buyer paid closing cost, who's paying for what. And now we enter into that as a commission is now something that could be negotiated along with things like when we're closing. I mean, every situation is different. You might be able to get a deal together and negotiate your commission because the buyer's willing to let the seller stay in the house post-closing for a week or two to help them consolidate not having to move twice, for example. We have one of those going on right now. So there are a lot of different terms and conditions in a contract that is beyond the price. And now you have to see that the commission is one of those variables if your buyer is wanting the seller to, to provide that. And see, the challenge that so many people are having and that you have to help the buyer understand is prior to these changes, it was built into the commit. The commission right. was built into the offer that the buyer wrote. So in my mind, always the buyer has been paying the seller's commission because it was built into the offer that they negotiated and finally got accepted with right. whatever. It just, other wasn't, it just wasn't part of the discussion. So this, it just this, wasn't. Really is, this is the skill set paradigm shift right here is what it is. That actually, you're absolutely right. All of the all of the whole thing is really almost the same thing from a buyer or seller standpoint, you know, as far as money spent, because it was all in there anyway. But but from the agent standpoint, you have to shift your paradigm. Exactly. So yeah. now the overall impact on the home buying process you must discuss, right? Because now the change is it's so, so important that you involve your lender early in this consultation process because you working with a lender, if obviously if they're paying cash, a different story. If they are, so the lender can work with the buyer and all of you collaborate to know exactly what are various ways this buyer is going to be able to move forward. So the lender can come up with the various options, closing costs, where do they need help, maybe even a consultation around needing to have more money in the event that you have to pay commissions. This is part of what you might have to do in consultations, especially for first time home buyers or people who have limited funds for down payment. We'll have to see if uh, things change in the government with any kind of uh, government programs uh, that might happen with potentially a new administration or whoever is the president, the next president. But beyond that, it's are the Fannie and Freddie and HUD and VA going to allow, for example, buyers to finance their commission? These are things I think that are coming. That, of course, is going to further impact things, but maybe make things easier for right. everybody. Okay. In a way, the buyer was financing the commission Absolutely. before Absolutely. they go get a loan. And part of that was paying an X percent commission that covered their buyer's agent's fees and they're paying it in their mortgage, if you will. See, it's just yeah. a mindset shift to say, right. here's how we're putting it over here now in the contract. And if the seller agrees to pay for it, you're you're basically paying for it, aren't you? Because you have to make a payment and it was incorporated into your overall loan if they allow the, um, the commission to be financed down the road, which might happen. So it's important to talk to the lender up front, work as a team to come up with all the scenarios for what's going to help your buyer buy. And, and the hardest one always is going to be the folks that just don't have all, they have just been saving for a down payment, maybe for closing costs, but now maybe they have to also be aware that they need to save to be able to pay their buyer's agent. 
maybe they don't have to pay their buyer's agent, but they probably will have to pay their buyer's agent if and when the market changes to a seller's market where there are lots of people buying houses. And I see that happening potentially in the future, not right away. It has to have the interest rates have to come down low enough that sellers want to put their homes on the market to create a market where there's a lot more buyer demand. And if there's a lot more buyer demand and we don't have enough inventory, prices are going to go up and, and competition is going to be tough to get the seller to cover any kind of concession, right. let alone covering your commission. So these are conversations that are going to change as the market changes. But right now, what we're covering today in this podcast is applicable for most markets around the country because there are still options. The buyer still has some pull in being able to negotiate if the house has been sitting on the market for a little while, which was what we're seeing. So there is more cost. Make sure you're having that conversation. Involve your lender. And finally, it's your value proposition as an agent. You must be covering the benefits of having an experienced agent who is up to speed with the market, understands what's going on in our market, what we're able to negotiate, your ability to negotiate for them, all the way you streamline the transaction, take the stress out of the transaction, reduce time. People want this still. I, I, I don't run into anybody who goes, I can handle this on my own unless they they were investors before they they're, they're going to go you know just very few people might go directly to the listing agent majority of people want somebody to take care of them that is what is the good news here but you have to step up to the plate to show your value and and say and let people realize that they ought to choose you and the way they're going to choose you is because you do this consultation and it leads you to signing the buyer brokerage agreement with them right then before you start showing homes. Okay. So those are the key changes for our, our practices that need to be integrated when you're talking to a buyer. Let's switch gears, Matt, and we'll talk a little bit about the seller. So obviously we have to do the same thing. Mr. and Mrs. Seller, are you aware of the recent changes? And you're going to hear, yeah, I understand that it, the law says I don't have to pay the commission. No, nope, that's not exactly what happened. Let me go over the two practice changes and you cover no offer of compensation in the MLS. Doesn't mean and I'm going to talk to you about that right now that, you know, doesn't mean that the buyer's agent might not ask for that. And we, the, the buyer has to have a buyer agent brokerage with any agent that they're showing that discloses the compensation and the various ways it can get paid. Start with that. It's as simple as that. Don't overcomplicate it. Right. Now, all the big change we're doing with the seller, the seller is an easy side. Because now what we're saying is, Mr. Seller... We now are going to negotiate the commission that you're going to pay me and my brokerage firm. And here is what I do to earn that commission. And then you're going to go through your whole value proposition and you're going to talk about and in the commit in the listing agreement, you're going to negotiate your commission only. Now, in our Nevada form, there's no place to put the seller wants to offer compensation. However, I have seen other listing agreements and other uh, states that it says there's an option for the seller to say, I want to uh, consider offering compensation. So again, use your forms, but really the big practice change on the listing side is you just negotiate your commission, show your value, your marketing plan, what it is you're going to do to earn the commission that you're charging. And that's what you negotiate. Now, that being said, it's critically important to cover some of the things that I just talked about yeah. up until this point, Mr. Seller, we were offering a comp, we were negotiating a total commission and we were agreeing upon the amount that I was going to offer of the commission we negotiated, what we were going to put in the MLS. That's changed now. Now, what's changed, and let me show you, here's our purchase agreement. Let me show you where it is now in the boilerplate for the buyer's agent to ask, see if the buyer wants to see if you will pay that on his behalf. Now, prior to this, this is where you have to go prior to this, everything I just said. The buyer was basically paying that commission in the offer that they brought. So if you're telling me you don't want to pay any commission, that's fine. What I'm going to suggest to you is we wait and see what the offer comes in and we look at each offer for its strengths and all the terms and conditions that you're telling me that are important to you. You know, you mentioned that you want to be able to have a longer close. Here are some ways that we can make that happen. It's important for you to get this or that or whatever the situation is. And if you don't 100% want to offer any compensation, just know that the reality is they're going to come in lower in this market right now. 
in this market right now, if they have to pay for it, it used to be in the offer. Now they're going to take it out of the offer. So they have it to pay their buyer. Okay. So let me just kind of do two net sheets for you and show you what I mean. And that's where I would go. Here's a net sheet asking Beautiful. for a commission at, a, at, a, at, a, at this price, which is what we can negotiate all of this. And here's one with the, take the same amount. If it's two, two and a half, three, whatever, and show the net. And then that's going to be pretty much the same. You got to get them fo focused on, here's what people do. People focus on a price. People focus on, I don't want to have to pay that. Yeah. What they, what you want to help them focus on is what I think they really want is how much money are they walking away with? So it's all about the net. Not everybody's about that. It's about getting the term. Some people will give up some of their commission to be able, I mean, their net proceeds to have what it is that they want. So this is why, for example, the eye buyers, the open doors, the cash buyer work for some people. They're willing to take less money, walk away with less money because they don't have to have anybody go through their home. I just right. had people tell us that. I, do, I have a situation in my home. I don't want people in. We have some family members and this and that. It, uh, yes, I will give up three or 4% that I would be able to have if I put it on the open market because I want the convenience of knowing I have a cash deal. They're going to let me stay in here and then I'm going to move to my new house. That's an example of why it's not always about the bottom line. It's mm -hmm. about what's important to each individual seller. So you have to be able to talk about that. But the best part with sellers is like, why don't we just go, let me get going. Let me see if I can get a bunch of offers and we'll be in a position where we can negotiate what is the best terms and conditions for you and your circumstances. And we'll, why don't we look at each situation as it comes in? Because I'm not getting hung up on somebody saying, well, I, I understood I don't have to pay the commission anymore. I think there's very few people, by the way. I right. think people just want to get their home sold and they want sure. the bottom line or they want the terms or whatever is important to them, as I just said. And when you get an offer, if you don't get offers because the market is tight, or, you know, hard right now, meaning there's a lot of, not as many buyers and uh, there's just a lot of homes sitting on the market, when it comes down to it, the bottom line is going to be the bottom line and sellers are probably going to end up paying if they, uh, if they like the bottom line. Okay. And if they keep countering the offers and saying, we're not doing it and those people move on, ultimately we'll see what happens. Right. So I'm not really worried about that. So. And it gets back I, to, again, this, the beauty of this, the net sheet, you know, the net sheet doesn't lie. It really shows you, it takes all this, you know, what if scenarios out of the air and puts it down on paper yeah. and it's so easy to tell. It's like, okay. Yeah. We got to get the emotions out of it and yeah. just make it a business transaction, right. uh, show your value and all of that and that and your negotiation skills. Because honestly, there are lots of ways to make the deal all come together. That everybody's Literally. happy. Right. So, all right. So let's go through some key takeaways over all this today and just wrap it all up for you and, and give you some things to think about uh, right now. So number one, you have to be the local market expert. Now we, I cannot tell you how much I think this is the key for real estate agents. Uh, you know, I have said many, many times in a podcast, my, my experience of that happened when I moved to Florida a few years ago and didn't know anything about that particular market in the Tampa Clearwater area. And I had to go out and learn. And I learned by getting out there and previewing the inventory and learning about the new homes that were in the Tampa area, uh, just looking at homes, studying everything, understanding the nuances and differences of uh, using my MLS to to learn and actually get some, some experience, right? Uh, then it makes you feel confident in being able to sit down and talk to people about how these changes now are impacting things, but you can understand where there's abilities to make things happen, right? right. I mean, the tough market for all buyers uh, agents are, is going to be a market where the seller is in charge. And right now the seller is not completely in charge. The seller's in charge in our market when they have a great home, an older great home or a newer home that is pristine. Everybody wants the beautiful home that needs no renovations. So if it's priced well and it looks good and it's turnkey, it gets multiple offers. That's going to be harder. To be able to, uh, you know, I mean, but the same thing, somebody who is paying their own agent or paying cash, they expect to get a lower price. If you're wanting that house and you're willing to come in at and give up some of the other terms and get things covered, including your, you know, the buyer's agent's compensation, honestly, that could win over an offer that's lower. That doesn't ask for commission. See, see what I mean? I think people are making this like way too more difficult than it is. I think you just have to deal with each situation individually. But be the local market expert. Critically important to build your personal brand. You have to 
separate and distinguish yourself from all the other folks out there. What is going to happen like it always does? The good news is people need to buy and sell. And I don't care what happens in a market, market changes. Now we have these practice changes. Guess what? People still need to sell and buy. And they want to work with professional expert people in their area, real estate agents. That's the good news. You have to be able to show how you stand out. And you, there's many ways to do that, whether you niche market, uh, what you, how you present yourself in your presentations, the way you talk to people, your your online presence, if you're doing anything on uh, social media and so forth, that's the way to be able to show your brand through your your uh, endorsements, um, reviews and so forth that you have from past clients. Testimonials was the word I was looking for. So be, I feel there's going to be, uh, it's going to get more competitive. I think there's the good people are going to get even better. Yep. There's always the top that just to make the adjustments and they're going to do fine. They're not going to have any worries because they're already doing a great job. I think the middle of the pack is going to have to find a way. And then there's a whole bunch of people who are the hobbyists and the part-time practitioners that are going to have a hard time competing in this uh, market if they're not doing the things that we were talking about today. And so we'll see some upheaval and, and maybe people getting out of the business. I think we're going to see new models, as I mentioned. There's gonna, there's always innovative people trying to figure out, here's a new way to do the business, and here's a new way that we're going to get business. And I'm not sure how I feel about all that yet. I'll, I'm open to seeing what all the scenarios are. I just know that what we do, and what and I know what our worth is, and I have a hard time doing less for a client to get paid less. Like I would just be that person who would be doing all this and getting paid less. So right. a model that is... Uh, menu driven and services right now I can't see happening for me because I can't not do an amazing job for people. Okay. That right. that's a personal oh. conflict. Like I'm just going to go out and show properties and it's worth this much. And you know, where do you start going with that? Now that I'm going to give you all my advice about how doing this and that, this is how much that's worth. I don't see how that's going to work, but listen, do I believe there's going to be models where it's like, you don't really get great buyers don't get great representation because it's very functional and practical and yeah. this is worth this and this is worth this. And I write the contract and I do my best. Yeah. But I don't think those people are going to get the best possible representation. That's just how I, but I think there's room for all of it. There's room for the people that are going to say my commission is X and here's how I earn it. And here's how I've made the difference. And here's what people have told. Here's other people saying what the difference is and how we were able to negotiate a better deal for them. So there's that you have to stay informed. I mean, we, we possibly could have more changes, they're uh, based on what I just said there about model changes, but who knows? You have to stay on top of it. So that's through your brokerage, through your local association, through things like Inman and, you know, housing wire and wherever else you get your news and information. And again, it's always about being adaptable. Innovation and adaptability are so key. You have to be flexible and ready to make the changes. We Hopefully you've already made all these changes. We're just reiterating what they are. And I wanted to share some anecdotal stuff today to say, yeah, this is really a negotiable item. It's happening. Uh, and every deal is going to be different. And that's how you should handle it. And then you can leverage things like digital marketing and social and social media to as a platform to edge, continue to educate buyers right. and sellers about uh, what are the changes and what are the value proposition that you bring? And not so much be about you, but be about providing information that people want about buying and selling and living in your area. And that's what I think is critical to being able to, it builds into your personal brand as well when you do that. Okay. So that is our little conversation for today. Only about a month in already seeing some changes. I don't see it being completely negative, but I have mm -hmm. had different experiences in about four or five transactions already. I think it's going to be interesting to see. We jump ahead to September of 2025 and see where this all lays and how it's all flushed out and what everyone, mm -hmm. you know, where the stats are at that point. It's going to be interesting. And I think you're absolutely right, Chan. You know, don't make more out of this than it is. You know, understand the the changes and understand how you communicate those changes and just go with it. Because in the end of the day, you know, this is really all about how you're going to be able to communicate and how you're going to, you know, be able to explain what's going on out there. So it's good stuff. All right. If uh, you want to get the show notes for today's episode, go over to WBNOpodcast.com. Uh, this was episode 310. So all the show notes will be over there. Join us next week in episode 311. Actually, we're going to 
kind of do what we've been doing along the way here uh, the last few months. We're going to give you a little sneak peek into our real estate sales builder course. This time we're going to actually talk about the buyer consultation. The other part that we didn't talk about today, we're going to talk about the part about how you go in there and you really explain what your value is going to be and what you're going to do and how you can actually, you know, uh, hook those buyers in. So separate from the commission conversation, we're going to give you a little sneak peek into our, our program and, and show you that. So that's going to be next week in episode 311. Uh, and also, you know what, end of the year is coming up. Business planning time is upon us. If you don't have any business planning tools, go over to our website, uh, to our freebies page. We have a whole little mini course on uh, real estate um, business uh, planning. And uh, that's over in our agent fundamentals course, absolutely free. Go over and check it. Ton of downloads with that spreadsheet. So it will help you with everything from your personal budgets and your business budgets and your master plan and uh, setting goals and the whole shebang over there in our fundamentals course. Uh, at wbnlcoaching.com, go to our freebies tab, and there you can find that. And that's it for this week, folks. Um, you know, align, connect, and prosper, <laughs> and be forever wandering but not lost. <laughs>